I'm with author and researcher Gordon Strong at the megalithic site of Stanton Drew in Somerset. Gordon, can you can you enlighten me? Tell me a bit more about this wonderful place that we're, we're standing in. Certainly. Uh, this is the Stanton Drew megalithic site, and it consists of three stone circles and a couple of other features as well. The circle just behind us is the smallest one, that is the, uh, the northeast circle, and that's the most complete one. The other circle which is behind the camera is the great circle, and that's about the size of a football pitch. On elevated ground uh, to the south is the third of the circles, and I think that that's probably the site where uh, the priestly class may have um, directed proceedings below. In the cup garden is something called the cup, which consists of three stones, and that it probably predates the rest of the site. To the north here is Hopeville's Quoit, which was a standing stone um, that is important in terms of the alignment of the stones. On the horizon, if you can see it, is Maze Knoll, which is an island It might be behind that stone, <laughs> but I can assure you it's there. Do you, uh, you, you say that Stanton Drew is important, that it uh, predates Avery. How, how old is it? It's 4,000 years old. And, and uh, can you tell me how perhaps it was built, um, how it was designed, why it was designed, and what was it used for? Right. Well, I think that the, the construction of it, uh, the, the actual transportation of the stones, was probably along the River Chu, which runs here along the, the edge of the site to the north. And that um, was probably where the stones were floated along rafts because at the southern, uh, southern southwesterly end of the River Chu is uh, a place called West, West Harptree, where the stones were obviously quarried from. Um, as to its purpose, um, that's, of course, a matter of speculation, um, probably for rituals of some description and also a place of meeting, um, a place where the indigenous population of a area would gather probably around uh, Beltane time, May the 1st, and probably through the summer as well. So they were important, this was an important place in, in megalithic times four, five thousand years ago. Uh, why, why should people take an interest in it in these modern times? Well, I think that there seems to be a great interest in previous eras. Um, this was, in a lot of ways, I think a golden age in the sense that um, it was probably a very peaceful time, uh, a time when the, the goddess would have been the dominant influence, the dominant spiritual influence. And also, I think it's a time where there was no warfare. This is the, the first time that people are gathering their animals together, they want to be husbandry. And so it's a time when it's the first time that there's a communal element in what's being done. Would this site be of interest to people, for example, who are interested in earth energies? Very much so. Um, the, the dowsers that I brought here have uh, found some extraordinary things. Here, uh, the actual energies within certain stones are very powerful indeed. There is a stone over there, which we generally refer to as Sig's stone, after Sig Lonegren, um, who demonstrated very dramatically that um, if someone leans onto um, probably about the first third of the stone, it actually will throw them off um, in quite a powerful fashion so 
I could could say that um, each of these stones has its own power. Some appear to be more more powerful than others. I was dowsing earlier today. I found that there's a greater energy in the west here um, between these two two stones here, which are in fact my stones. And there seems to be a, a much a greater surge here than there is in the other four cardinal points. How, how accessible is the site? I mean, can people jump in their cars and come here for the day? They certainly can. And um, perhaps I've, I've slept here, actually, a couple of nights. Um, <laughs> so uh, you can uh, get here, have access all day and all night. Um, I would hasten to add that um, the guardian of the site, in the sense rather than the spiritual guardian, the physical guardian, the farmer who owns this field, is extremely conducive to uh, activities here, extremely tolerant of everything here, so don't abuse that privilege. Marvellous, thank you. And, and finally, um, you've done an awful lot of research on the, on the site, and, and you've put this into a book. Can I you tell me a little bit about the book? Yes, I certainly will. Uh, this is published by Wooden Books of Glastonbury, and it is £4.99. And it is in a very handy size, full of uh, original illustrations. And the book deals with all, the, I think, the, the, the major speculations about the site and its history. Also, some related sites of Somerset. It's not easy to find um, other sites of this magnitude that are close to Stanton Drew. But we have done our best. Yes. Well, it's been an absolutely fabulous visit for me, my first visit to Stanton Drew. And um, thank you very much, Gordon, for, for telling us about it. My pleasure.